Welcome to the Spiritual Transformation Podcast. I'm your host, Mary Beth, and today I have a special guest. You don't want to miss this guy's story. His name is Jason Janis. Jason, how are you doing today? I'm fantastic. How are you, Mary Beth? I'm so excited to have you on as a guest. Doesn't it seem like forever since we talked first connected? <laughs> It seems like it's been like a couple months, you know, and it's only been a few weeks. But I you know. know. Well, I've been looking forward to this. I, I, I have too, you know. I like, you know, I I have been very passionate, you know, as of late to I want people to wake up. You know, mm -hmm. I want them to know who they who they really are and not the stuff that they've been shoveled for millennia. So, you know, I I'm very eager to help the all of all of those that, you know, are on the cusp of like, you know, one and one, it's not adding up to two anymore, you know. So I'm, you know, I'm very passionate about this. So thank you for having me. I'm on. I know. And that's why I had you on because I felt your passion. I felt how authentic you were. And I was like, I gotta have this guy. And I love how you're vulnerable, even you tell you you really get real in your and when you tell your story. And I appreciate that so much. Um, Absolutely. so I'm going to read your quick short bio, just so people have a tiny bit of your background and then yeah. we'll get, get right into the interview. Okay. So in 2020, Jason Janice had a profound near death experience after contracting COVID-19 and developed tumors in his lungs that later ruptured, causing him to drown in his own blood. What happened to him during that hospital stay and afterward has changed his perspective of human life forever. He, he's going to share a story with us today about um, his thoughts, about our purpose here on planet Earth, about religion, about Christianity, and more. So let's get into it. So let's start, if you don't mind, talking a little bit about Jason as a child. What was your background like? Your, how, what was it like growing up? Sure. I was born in April of 1970, so I'm a Gen Xer, you know. And I'm sure a lot of Gen Xers will understand this is like, you know, like we were the unwanted generation, you know, um, I was born in 74. So I get it. <laughs> so, you know, you know what I'm talking about. So, you know, um, by the age five, I had already learned how to cook, had a key to the get into the house, you know, was cleaning and and, and stuff like that. So um, but it was the 70s. So it was a very carefree place, you know, but in the same time, I grew up you know, I was living with my mother. My parents got divorced when I was roughly four or five. And, you know, my mother was an alcoholic um, and I don't want to bash and I'll get into it in a minute. Um, but I grew up in a very abusive household. I, I was beaten, you know, I, you know, very early not to make any noise in the house, you know. Um, so I learned how to get up and, you know, make myself a bowl of cereal and sit two inches from the TV because the volume couldn't be up too loud. Get my sister up who was three years younger than me get her a bowl of cereal, you know, so that's how I grew up, you know, but in the same aspect, I had a lot of freedom, you know, like I would get out of the house and I would just, I'd be miles away from home on my bike, you know, in, in a different town, you know, and nobody knew where I was. That's how it was back then. Like, you know, now it's like, I, I track my kid, you know, even, and he's well, almost, he's almost 21 and I'm still like looking at life 360 on the app because I worry. And it's like, our parents had no clue where we were, what we were doing. No, we were no. just gone. I was, yeah. I don't even know how I'm alive to be honest. My, with you. you know, my time frame was that street light comes on and you're not home. You know, you're going to get an ass whooping. So that was my timer. You know, and I, I mean, I would literally be walking in the door, you know, the screen door would shut and that light would come on, you know, and, you know, that was it, you know. Um, so I grew up in a, in a rough household. My, you know, it was very difficult. You know, it wasn't your typical, you know, rays and sunshine, puppy dogs and kitten cats, you know, <laughs> um, it, it, that didn't happen for Jason. Um, so but in, like in the summers and the weekends, I would go to my grandmother. You know, and she lived in Wisconsin. So, you know, that would be with my dad. My dad, of course, would ditch me at Gramps, which was fine, you know. And she's the one that taught me how to cook, how to clean, how to drive, how to do all of these things that, you know, you would normally learn. But she was also the one that was very religious. She was the one that brought me up in Christianity, you know. And as a young boy going to church, you know, I believed what the priest was saying right you know when he was preaching the bible I, you know i firmly believe that was god's breath his very breath heaven and hell good and bad right and wrong you know and i'm like well god doesn't love me very much um 
he must have forgotten me or just doesn't care because, you know, the beatings that I would get, you know, and um, but I grew up that way. So, you know, when I got into fifth and sixth grade, I got sent to a, a Catholic school. So, you know, I went to I learned how to become an altar boy. And I grew up, you know, for those two years in a religious, a Catholic school, again, having it, you know, shoved down my throat of, and I firmly believed it, you know? Um, so that's how I grew up. And then, you know, in my late teens, you know, I began doing drugs, you know, smoking. Pa- Hello, kitty cat. Yes. Um, he, this is my co-host TJ. And he TJ. likes to, he visits most of the time. So that's why he became my co-host, but yeah, well, that's all right. Um, so, you know, I began smoking pot and then, you know, just misbehaving, um, just a little bit doing some drinking. And again, you know, when I was little and I, I really didn't, I talked about it later on in some of my interviews, I had some bisexual experience. I started experimenting with, you know, Hey, does this happen to you too? You know? And it's like, yeah, you know, we started playing. It wasn't actually intercourse yet, but it was still, you know, that, and I'm like, the older I got, you know, and then it did turn into that, like around 10 or 11. I didn't, I never had any educate. Nobody ever told me anything, you know? So I thought I had the the scam on everybody's like, look at this, you know, this is, this is fun. You know, nobody said anything, but then you were only, you said 10 or 11 was when the the first, that's really young. Yeah. 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 It was, well, I had there, I was, Left curious to my own right curious. so you know you, you know so anyway but then you know i found out you know then going to ccd and you're older oh that, that's an abomination you're gonna burn burn in hell and i'm like wow god now this now i'm really screwed you know now there's there's no saving jason jason is just doomed mm-hmm. you know and i lived with that guilt and shame and fear for 50 years, you know, and then it was late seventies. My grandmother went to wake me up to go to church. And I, I, I kicked at her and I said, don't you ever wake me up. Don't you ever wake me up to go, you know? And she's like, Chase, you know? And I said, he doesn't care about me. Do you understand? I said, I'll take care of myself. Don't you ever wake me up. And that moment was the last time I ever had a conversation with God. And that was like 1977, 78. You know, and I never talked to him. I never prayed to him. I never prayed to Jesus. I never, I just knew I was doomed. So um, that makes sense because you felt rejected. You're already rejected. So why? Right. So, you know, and the Bible says, you know, because it's God's written word. So homosexuality, not that I was, I was just curious, you know, Right. but it was, um, just says it right there. It's an abomination. You are going to burn in hell. So I knew I was doomed. And it just, it just set me off on a path of just not caring. I was going to say something else, but just not caring, you know, and I just went through my life, just not caring about anyone or anything anymore. You know, I just did things Jason's way. And if it got in your way or you got hurt, well, that's too bad. You know, I'm already doomed anyway, so it doesn't matter, you know, and that's just the way I went through my life, you know, and then I got married at 21, had my first child, you know, and I treated them poorly. I treated them horrifically. Mm. You know, I just didn't care, you know, no matter what happened, I just didn't care, you know, and I still up until my, my hospital stay or my death, that was over 42 years, you know, even when my son died, my, my, my current ex-wife, he, she, he was born under a McDonald's stall. And so I'm holding my dead son in my hand. You know, I, I cursed God. I -hmm. said, I hate you. I hate you. I hate your guts. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not worthy enough to have a son, huh? That you're going to take that from me too. Well, you, you know, I hope you rot, you -hmm. know, and I just cursed them. And, you know, again, went through a rough time, you know, not knowing who I really am, you know, and it's then, like, it's like a mask. Like you, you, yes. you were going through life wearing a mask because it, it's not that you really didn't care, but you felt like what happens if I do care? <laughs> right. You know, and it's just like, you know, every time I care, I get hurt. So what, mm-hmm. what's the point? 
you know, there is no point anymore. You know, you're going to send me to be tortured the rest of my life and or eternity. And that's just the way it's going to roll. Right. OK. So, you know, that's the way that's the way my childhood teens and and, you know, 20s, 30s and 40s. And by the time 49 rolled around and now it's now April 2nd. Um, and I started waking up with blood a couple of weeks prior to that. It's like, did I bite my tongue or something? And then I come home from work, April 2nd, I sit down on this very couch, right where I'm at, watching TV, started to eat some food. And I'm like, man, I'm really tired. I'm like so tired. I went to take a bite of food and bright red blood just spewed mm. out of my mouth. Like, I mean, bright red, not like when you cut your finger, it's a dark red. This was the brightest red you have ever seen. And I'm like, you know, my, my food and I'm coughing and, co and my, now my plate is literally full of blood, like a couple inches of blood, you know, and I try to get up and walk to the, to the kitchen, you know, to the sink. And I'm like, you know, and I'm like, I can't breathe, you know? And I'm like, so I'm frantically trying to, to FaceTime and talk to my ex-wife. She's on, she's an RN. And I'm like, she's not going to answer the phone. I'm like, I don't know what to do. I'm like, now I'm starting to panic. You know, there's no air coming in. And it's very, very difficult to breathe. She finally answers the phone and it's a FaceTime. And she's like, what do you want? And I tried to talk to her and blood spewed out all over the phone. And the last thing I remember was like, she's like, Jason, she jumped up off the couch. And I said, I don't feel good. She goes, Jason. And I said, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm just going to go lay down. And she said, Jason, if you lie down, you're going to die. Jason, don't lie down, please. I said, I'm, I'm tired. I said, I can't breathe. And I said, I'm, I'm going to go lay down. And that's all I remember. And next thing I know, I'm awake, but now it's dark and I'm in the hospital and my hands and feet are strapped to the bed. I could maybe only move them a quarter inch um, tube in my throat stuff in my nose, IV right there in the carotid artery. Um, and I have a myriad of people, Jason, Jason, do you know who you are? Do you know where you are? Do you, who are you? Do you know where, you, you know, do you know where you are? And I'm like, how the hell do you expect me to answer that with a, a two inch tube down my throat? And I didn't have the energy and I said, do you know where you are? And I was like, yeah, you know, um, um, it was truly, a I had never experienced pain like this this was mind mind altering pain i mean it was it was like you know like cement trucks on like five tons of cement trucks you know i couldn't breathe and I, all these people and it's dark but the moment my eyes awoke and i get crap for this all the time from people um as i looked off to the left because up in the left hand corner somebody was there there was a tv there but there was, there was a presence, an, an unbelievable presence. So I tried to peer through the doctors, you know, and it was dark, but there was a, a, just an undeniable presence there. And I just kept staring at the TV and it was just like, I want to go there. Please let me go there. You know, I was in the hospital for a month, lost 75 pounds, very lethargic. But the entire time I was there, that presence was there. You know, and, uh, you know, when you're, when, when you, when, when you, when you're that, when you die and you're that close to that, that, that moment, you know, nobody was in the room that time. I was now off the ventilator. It's the end of April. Okay. And, um, I can breathe on my own. They found the problem. They said, Jason, we have no idea why this happened to you. You don't drink, you don't smoke, you get exercise, you're really not overweight. There's no reason we should have pumped out 2.8 liters of blood, which is like 11.8 cups of blood. So they pumped out 12 cups of blood from my lungs. Okay. They said, there's no reason we can't, we cannot put it. So they chalked it up to COVID. Okay. And um, so it was late in the afternoon. And it was a beautiful, and I'm staring at the TV. And while I was on the ventilator, one of the nurses says, Jason, do you want me to turn the TV on for you? And I'm like, no. And I still had the tube, you know, I'm like, how do you tell somebody, somebody's standing right there? You know, they're going to look at you like I'm nuts. <laughs> you know, I'm mean, somebody's right there. You know, I can't see them, but I can, I can feel it. And I'm like, I don't know what's going on. 
Who, why, who, why? Did, who, who do you think the presence was like? Oh, I know who it was when I when it when I transitioned. That was God. You know, it was pure and simple. I as soon as I transitioned, I knew exactly who it was. So I'm off the ventilator, right? And it's probably late in the afternoon, like two or three in the two and three in the afternoon. Beautiful. So as my bed, as I'm looking out the window over there, all I could see was the top of a tree. So like some green leaves and some beautiful clouds and the blue, blue sky, right? So I don't know what, how I did this or why, because I hadn't called out to God in God since 1977. Okay. It's now 2020. And I was so lethargic, but I got up out of my elbows and I'm shaking uncontrollably and I begin to sob. And if I get emotional on you. No, it was obviously take your time. I said, God, please don't let me die, please. I said, please. I said, I'm sorry for abandoning you. I'm talking to a, a TV set, you know? And I said, please don't let me die. Please let me see my daughters again, please. I said, I'm sorry for abandoning you and Jesus. I said, I never stopped believing. But I said, I did stop having a relationship with you. I said, I'm sorry. Please let me see my children again, please. And I said, uh, there was somebody that I loved deeply, and I said, please don't take her away from me. Please let me hold her hand and say one more thing to her. And it was in that moment, I was then at the top of the ceiling. I could see everything around me, the entire icy room from the, from the back all the way around instantly. And I was inundated in this light and love. And it flowed through me like a river. It was as warm as the sun. And I was like, I could see every blade of grass moving independently. I could see the serrations and the veins and the colors were liquid. And they were, it was moving. And I could see the, the soul of the grass and the trees. And I could feel their love. And I'm just, stand, I'm above my body. And I didn't even care about what was laying down there. It meant nothing to me. And I'm staring at this TV and I know it's God. And I was like, I'm home. And I said it, it was a thought. And I said, I'm home. How the hell would I know that? That I was home, you know? And I knew exactly where I was. I knew who I was, you know? And I said, I'm home. I'm sorry, I'm emotional. No, I know. I was just trying not to cry myself. I was like, <laughs> you know, it's okay. You know, and I was just like, and I was like I'm home. And I just didn't want to be here in this physical world anymore, you know? And even though I'm, I'm staring straight, all of a sudden this undeniable presence shows up right in front of me. And it's Jesus. I recognize him instantly, instantly. And that love was just so overwhelming. It was like being placed about 10 feet down in a river and the river would hit you and move around you. And this love flowed through me and it was so warm. I had never experienced love like that in my entire life even from my children you know and I was like I'm home I'm home you know and I don't know whether that took five minutes five seconds five hours but I was just in const in this love in this warmth and this light and I just wanted to say even though I begged not to die you know and uh, I was just wrapped up in this and I just I was home. I wasn't, even though I was still in the hospital, but it's so hard to describe what another dimension is like, you know, because I wasn't in the hospital room. What was being portrayed in my thoughts was the hospital room. So that's what I was seeing, you know, so it really wasn't the hospital room. And um, Jesus had walked up to me. No words were ever spoken to me. And after I said, I'm home, the next thought, and it was instantly communicated was like, what a beautiful day to die. Like I had done this a thousand times, like it was nothing, you know? And then uh, two hands were placed on my chest and pushed my soul back into my body. And then I was pushed back onto the bed and I was instantly out. I mean, instantly out. And again, I awoke, how much time had passed, I don't know, but um, I had nurses around me, several nurses, Jason, Jason, are you okay? We tried to wake you up and I'm like, I looked over the TV and that presence was gone, you know? And I was like, 
I'm looking around. I'm like, how do you tell somebody what just happened? They're going to think I'm crazy. You know, I, 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 I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what happened to me. You know, how do I tell somebody I'm home when I'm in a hospital and this is not my home? You know, how do I tell somebody this? I didn't know what to do or say. I got discharged. I went home. I had to teach myself how to learn, how to walk, how to talk, how to drink, how to be a, you know, by this time I had turned 50, a, a 50 year old, you know, I had lost 75 pounds. So I could, it would take me an hour to go from one end of my apartment to the other. Cause I nice. didn't have the strength, you know? And, uh, so I was, you know, I had lost my job. My company had fired me. They wanted nothing to do with me. You know, I was in financial ruins and all I'm feeling is love from home constantly. It was, was more than I could bear. And, uh, you know, and I was like, you know, what happened to me shouldn't have happened to me because of, you know, what we discussed, my, you know, outright rejection of the Holy Spirit. Because if you read the Bible, you know, the, you know, the unforgivable sin is the outright rejection of the Holy Spirit. Well, I told the Holy Spirit to, you know, rejected him, rejected God, rejected everybody, had my bisexual experiences, did what I hurt people immensely throughout my life. And I have this experience and I'm like, I'm, I'm pacing back and forth in my house, you know, and I'm like, I got mad at God. And I said, you know, I, I put my arms up and I said, you know, you picked the wrong person. I said, you picked the wrong person. You know, you should have picked a pope, a bishop, you know, a saint, uh, somebody worthy of this, you know. And that was the first time I heard God's voice. It was loud and clear. And, you know, and I said it again. I said, you picked the wrong person, you know, and his voice. And these were his exact words to me. He says, why not? You are my son. You know, I'm like, am I going mad? And I'm like, you know, I was at the end of my bed and I dropped to my knees. And for the love of God, even to this day, I don't know why I said this, but truer words were never spoken. When I dropped to my knees and I put my hands up was the first time I ever surrendered. And I said, all that I am, I am you, which means I am God. I am you. I, you and I are one. We are the same. I didn't know it at the time because more downloads were coming and more spiritual experiences were coming that confirmed that. But how I, how I learned to say that, I have no idea, you know, but I said that. And the first lesson that I had to learn immediately after that was given to me was I was shown that I never loved myself, you know, and the love that I experienced, I shouldn't have had. And it was like, you know, I love you. And, you know, you need to love yourself. And it was like, the second lesson was then um, forgiveness, love and forgiveness. So I had to forgive myself for feeling unloved and unwanted my whole life. And once I did that, once I surrendered and, you know, and I love myself today. As I said, said, you love yourself immensely. I am a handsome man. I am beautiful. And I love myself. And it felt like the weight of the world was literally ripped out of me. You know, I, and I, was like, I, I could breathe, you know. And that was my first step in healing. And the second step, and I don't know why I did this, I needed to talk to somebody. It's like, I don't have friends. I don't have family. I keep to myself, you know. And I was like, oh, I'll go to my church. You know, I'll talk to my pastor. So I go there and I tell him my experience. I, I, he said, yeah, I'd like to talk to you. So I'm sitting there and I'm telling him in detail everything. And he was sitting there like, never moved for 45 minutes as I'm telling him the story. In utter horror, the look of horror on his face was like I was pulling his teeth, you know? And I was like, he didn't know what to say. He got up and he was like, um, I said, I'd like you to speak to the congregation and to this and that. And, you know, basically he was trying to shut me up and get me out of there because when I tried to call him back, he blacklisted me. He wouldn't answer my phone calls. He wouldn't answer my texts. I wasn't welcome in the church. Um, that is wild. That is crazy. You know, well, the, the reason is, is because I proved 
they may not like this, all the shit that they were trying to shovel in Christianity was a lie. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's when the big light bulb came on, said, I didn't do anything wrong. And I knew in that moment of my transition that I didn't do anything wrong, you know, and then it was like, you know, I, I, I started listening to my GPS, my, you know, and I was like, your I internal knew what my, GPS. Yeah. Yes. My internal GPS. We all have it Two, mm-hmm. to our two keys given our an internal GPS and our sexual energy. Mm-hmm. We can talk about that in a moment, but <laughs> it was like, um, I was like, I knew what I had to do. I knew that I could no longer let people sit there and suffer from millennia of bullshit that that Bible and that that church preaches. I was the epitome of somebody that should have burned in hell for all eternity. And not only was I loved by God, Jesus accepted me, I was home, a place that I shouldn't have been. I knew exactly where I was and who I was. So that was the beginning after I came home. That was the beginning of my deconstruction from Christianity and from organized religion. I have a I have a deep question for you. Yeah. So if if we ignore, you know, the other stuff in the Bible, but let's think about what Jesus actually said and did and his the example that he showed, it was pretty much what you experienced, love, compassion, forgiveness. He was t- preaching non-judgment um all the things all the he things. was about equality he but he said that's what so we go by jesus what he showed us the example he showed yes. us then that part of the bible's right <laughs> correct absolutely but it has been you know if you read it it has been so sparse that his true message has been left out which is love mm-hmm. love in his first lesson was love yourself like your neighbor, correct? Love exactly. one another, you know? And instead yes, we get fear, true. fear, 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 fear. Right, right. You know, and, you know, and it's, it was just, his true message was written out of the Bible, you know, because yes. people were terrified, you know, and, you know, he taught equality. He taught men and women are the same. They're no different, period, mm-hmm. you know? And what he came here to teach was against the law. Yes. Okay. He was teaching and why we truly come to this earth. Yes. To experience things we can't at home, but we're all reaching the same goal. We're trying, you know, this is trying to reach who we are, our energy. We are Mm -hmm. love. We are light and we are energy. He was teaching you how to gain the powers that he had. Mm -hmm. He was teaching you how to meditate, how to access who you are. You are not your body. He said, this is who you are. And he showed people how he raised the dead. He healed leprosy. People would come to meet him and they were instantly healed just from his energy. And And the the powers that were, were threatened by this. And that's why, that's, that's why things went the way down the way they did, you know, but yeah, he was teaching all the stuff that, that I teach today, you know, like, like, like uh, empower, empowering self-empowerment. He said, anything that I do, you can do also and more. Right. He had it in the back of the mind. He's like, look, people, you're no different than I am. You and I are the same. You have this power. Come to me. I let me show you. So he was teaching these, you know, most of 90% of his teachings were in his own home with his wife, Mary. Okay. So he, people would come to him and one of two things would happen. They'd get freaked out and go, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, I, I'm going to die. Or, you know, they would come in and accept this because they could feel it. They would feel better around just his presence, you know? So, you know, he was executed as a common criminal. He was because he broke the law. Let's know? go backwards. To, so let's circle back to where you just said his wife, Mary, because I think a lot of people are going to be like, what? <laughs> well, Jesus was married. Jesus had children. OK, Jesus was not born in a barn, people. He was not born in a manger. Mom and dad, they got it on just like any heterosexual couple did. He had siblings. OK, Jesus was a incarnated in a human body he was a human you just know him as 
Jesus Christ. He had thousands of lives prior to this, just like I've died over 3,200 times. You just know me right now as Jason Janis, right? Okay. You don't know my other 3,000 lives. I don't even remember them right now. Our, our consciousness is focused currently on... Um, Mary yes. Beth and Jason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, you know, when you look, when people think of time, time doesn't exist. Okay. But when you think of people think of time as linear, like when we write or we speak, right, it's a linear and our language is archaic and barbaric. Actually, it is very limited. But when you think of time, you think of it this way, you know, here's the past. We're in the middle here. Right. No, think of time this way. Right. Everything is happening right now. All your lives, if we use the, the number 100 right now, okay, for you and me, right now, you, there's 100 versions of you out in the universe living right now, mm -hmm. scattered throughout the I've, Yeah, I've heard it's kind of like it's like in a way to, for, so for our brains to grasp, stacked. Like yes. time is kind of stacked. And, right. but and if, if you we lay were it out, focused, yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you lay it out like this, Everything's going down this way, but everything is playing out right now. Jesus said in the Bible, don't worry about yesterday. It doesn't exist. Well, he said it does. You know, you can't change it. Don't worry about tomorrow. It hasn't come. Live right now, because that's what is happening is right now. And this is where we're, we're at. So he's saying live, live right now. Don't worry about anything. Nothing else matters because nothing else is existing. Right now is where you need to be and focused on. Like Eckhart Tolle, Eckhart Tolle, the power of now. Like he he Correct. knew that from his awakening, where oh you know he was gonna about to commit suicide when he had his awakening, and right. and yeah, so the that's something that he teaches big time. The power of now, everything's right now. We the the past we we all of our power is in the moment and, and no, hardly right. any, hardly anybody focuses in the moment. Hardly anybody. Because they're so caught up in the fear and guilt, right? Mm -hmm. Like when I just did a video on fear, okay? People keep chasing fear, fear, fear. I said, okay, you have to look at it this way. And this is, this, this helped me a lot. You know, well, I don't have fear anymore. Fear doesn't exist. But when I, when I told people in my interview, we're all gods, there were some of us that got, there were some people out there that were just livid. We are not gods. Blasphemy. And I'm like, and I'm like, okay, then I will use your own book against you. When Jesus said to the disciples, and he said it out in public when other people were around, he said, I and the Father are one. Just like when I drop to my knees, all that I am, I am you. Just a different phrase, right? He said, I and the Father are one. Whoa, people got pissed off. They grabbed stones to stone them. And he said, from which good works of the father that I have shown you, am I to be stoned? They said, for your good works, not, but for blasphemy, you being a man, make yourself God. Isn't it written in your laws? I said, you are gods. Is it not written in your law? I said, you are gods. And there it is in the Bible, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus says it. You are all gods. You are all the direct manifestations of the divine, father, source, whoever you want to call it. Okay. So when I laid out fear, I said, it is physically impossible for you to separate yourself from God. You are God. Okay. You are the direct manifestation. So we, it's physically impossible for us to be anything else. Okay. So we got the bright idea one day. Ah, I'm going to go to sleep. I'm going to make this shit up. Okay. So what do we do? We went and fell asleep. What did that create? It created fear instantly. When we pulled away from oneness, right? We felt gear, guilt and fear from pulling away from father. And then all of a sudden incarnating here into this thing. What does that sound like to you? The fall from grace, right? Adam and Eve being kicked out of heaven, right? No longer to come back. Wrong. It was just our way of trying to experience different things other than home, which is love. So that's where fear originated from, was us separating or, or figuring we're separating ourselves from oneness, from God, and incarnating into this very difficult world. Okay, that's where fear and guilt came from. And it's been with us 
it's then, the am, the amnesia and then and then since the beginning of time there's always the the powers that be like like you mentioned earlier about things being removed from the bible like the lost gospel of thomas talks about these things talks correct. about consciousness oneness manifestation all of the things that are you know some you know hardcore uh, Christians would say is evil, but it's like, no, um, the stuff that you're calling evil is the stuff that Jesus taught. What are you talking about? It, it was just, right. But they don't want to hear that because they don't, you know, when, because when they're programmed, say, they've been programmed because Mary Magdalene's not in there. The gospel of Jesus himself isn't in there. The, the gospel of Thomas. Why? It says exactly who Jesus was. Right. So when the scribes were given this stuff, uh, what what happened? They feared for their lives. Look what happened to Jesus. He was executed for what he thought. I can't write this. So they filled it with nonsense. They filled it with fluff. Well, also, do you know about the Council of Nicaea? Which, the Council of Nicaea. Yeah, Count yeah. Constantine and the, the powers that were at the time decided to, like, what we're going to put in the Bible, what we're going to take out of the Bible. And, yeah, that's kind of... And he took that over, right? So by the time Jesus... The, the, the Old Testament wasn't even decided upon by the Jews by the time of Christ. So what, by the year 100 is under, you know, the Synod of Jamnia that they said, you know, the, the books of the Old Testament were finally decided upon, right? And then by the year 382, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were finally decided upon by who? The Catholic Church said, you will take these scriptures under our authority by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and we, the church, are the only ones that can, you know, dictate the Bible. Right, it's power, power, you know, the, the power. It's power. power and control. It's keeping you living in fear, right? You, nobody on this planet has done anything wrong, anything. There is no good or bad, right or wrong. What you are here for is to experience things. We as humans have begun to label things. Well, that was good, that was bad, that was right. You know, I chose the abuse. I chose to be born into that time period, into that family, in that place in the Midwest, so I could experience these things, so I could sit here in front of you today to discuss everything that happened in my life, including my death, and tell you that there is no fear, there is no judgment. Absolutely. The other side. None. And that's that's why you were, you're saying, uh, you, you know, why did you pick me? You picked the, the wrong guy. You were the perfect guy. <laughs> Right. You know, and because, you know, because of my resiliency, because no matter how many times you knock me back down or, or say the wrong naughty things or whatever, I'm going to get back up, you know, and I knew, even though I couldn't place my finger on it right away, that this was my purpose, you know, why I came here. I will not stand to have people live in fear because of the church. You are all beautiful, divine beings of love and light. And you are all loved more than you could possibly imagine. Okay, Woo. there are no words. That you just gave me full body goosebumps. <laughs> you know, there's no way in this archaic language to, to tell you how loved you are and that you've done nothing wrong and that you are surrounded by your archangel, by your guides. You are never alone, ever alone. It's an Never illusion. Been. It is all an illusion. None of this is real. None of it is. It's the matrix. It's a game. It's, it's, it's a figment. This is how powerful you are, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. You are dreaming all of this. When you look up into the night sky and you see the planets, the black holes, you are dreaming this. You are made, you are creating it right now in your thoughts. That is how powerful you, ladies and gentlemen, you are so powerful. The sun and the stars bow to you. Okay. You're just lost and you chosen to forget who you are. So you can experience everything that you are experiencing. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, some of them are unpleasant. Like right? I've experienced them. They're not fun, but they're there for a lesson. They're there. Your environment that you see every day, Every day is a direct consequence of your thoughts, okay? What you're seeing every day when you get up in the morning, go to work, and you live your life is a direct correlation of your thoughts. Your environment is there to teach you. It's not a punishment, okay? It's a, it's a lesson. So There's no creation without contrast. We have to experience contrast in order to, to even know 
like what we want, you know, we don't know what we want until we have what we don't want. And the contrast is the lessons, all the lessons. And, and if we, if this, that's what 3d reality is for, like correct, <laughs> right? experience, like we come in, we sign up, like you said earlier, you sign up for your parents, you sign up for their life. Like everything in my childhood, my childhood was rough too. And <laughs> in the seventies right. and we raised ourselves, let's face it. And, um, and, and it was hardcore. Like it's different these days with our kids, but um, yeah, we, we raised ourselves, but we picked it. We picked that time to be born and experience the things we experienced because guess what? I wouldn't change a thing. I wouldn't change a thing oh, about no. my marriage. My, I wouldn't change a thing about anything because everything's perfect because it made me who I am. That's, and that's why we're here. That's why we're but able that, to be teach other people how like right. self-empowerment, self-worth, self-love all those things that that are limiting beliefs and they're not true they are not true they are not true but i was something that i i need all of you guys to understand too is your thoughts whether unspoken or spoken are incredibly powerful don't think because you're sitting there belittling somebody or mad or angry that that doesn't matter because you didn't speak it oh we you oh, i know my back. camera doesn't yeah my camera doesn't so no <laughs> When you're thinking, whether unspoken, that negative energy is going out into the non-physical. It's going to collect more, you know, negative energy, and it's going to come back to you as negative energy. And you always say, why is this happening to me? It's your thoughts, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, And your, your feelings. Powerful. Your feelings. Like, you can't just be like... I am, you can't say positive affirmations, but you really feel something different. That's one of the things that was removed from the Bible, that mind and heart need to be in alignment. One. Yep. Correct. And, and then, the, and they said, I think it was the heart, like. Heart and mind are one. Yeah, but that was mind removed. That was removed. Why? Because they don't, the church doesn't want you to know. Your power. Who you are. They do not, because. The why? business. Look at it this way. Okay, look at it this way. The Vatican is located in Italy, right? But yet they are their own government. They are surrounded themselves with their own army, their own police force, and nobody, nobody, and you will be shot on sight if you try and get into the archives. Why? Because they picked up and removed every scrap of evidence that ever existed on who Jesus was, okay? And what is it protecting? When I said in the beginning, Jesus had siblings. Jesus had children. They're protecting the bloodline of Jesus, right? That can't get out. Why? Because the church said, okay, okay, okay. Jesus, he was the only son of God. Out of all the women that have ever existed in this, in this physical world, he was the only one that was all of a sudden just created out of nothing, right? And okay, okay. So they pushed him up. He said, okay. They pushed him up with God and said, okay, he's out of the way. You know, he's the only son of God, you know, and they got rid of him. And what did they, they put him on a pedestal. They, the church pedestalized Jesus, period. Now you worship Jesus. That's not what he came here to do. Not only did he not come here to be put on a pedestal, he did not come here to start a religion. That wasn't what he did. No. He came here to tell you people, wake up, realize who you are. Jesus was not religious. We no. can't. We cannot say that enough times. Jesus no. was not about starting a religion. He was trying to empower you. No. And from the time he was, you know, little, he was getting downloads. From the time he was little, Jesus, one thing Jesus never did was judge. From the time he was conceived, was born, little, grew up, he never judged, period. Okay? So when where he learned to gain his powers was he left mary in his late 20s mid 20s and he traveled across north africa and went into Indi india he stayed there for 3 years and learned from the masters right. in the in the fit in the east none of what jesus did here was weird that that's been happening over there for millennia and centuries right ancient ancient, ancient. Es esoteric wisdom yeah and, and and his name was yeshua Yeshua. Yeshua bar Yosef. Yes, Yeshua. Okay. Oh, you say a little different. Yeshua. Yeah, okay. Yeshua. Yeah, Yeshua, Yeshua bar Yosef. So he learned, and he learned how to meditate, and learned how to gain his control of his power. So he came back, got married, right? And then one day he's out walking around, he gets a massive download. Hey, you're to go get baptized. And I'm like, he's like, 
I don't want to be baptized. I, why? You know, but he's like, fine. So, you know, he goes, get back. So when he got pushed under the water, boom, like your spiritual awakening happened. It hit him. Christ consciousness happened, right? And he's spasming and he's jerking because he's getting everything now, you know, and he's jerking around and spasming. And he walked out of the river, you know, he, and he went into the, the woods and, the, and into the tree areas over there. And he wandered around for three weeks. You know it in the Bible as he wandered the desert for three for three weeks, tempted by the devil. No, he was just hiding because he couldn't go home because he was spasming and jerking. <laughs> and they thought, you know, if anybody saw him, he would be, you know, like, what's wrong with it? He'd be put to death for being, you know, possessed or something. Possessed you know? by demons. Possessed. Right. So he's, he's, you know, and he finally comes home. He's OK. Tells Mary what happened. And that was his moment. That was his last incarnation. He became one with the universe. OK. And at that moment, he also knew that two years later he was going to die. And this is how he was going to die. He told that to his family. He told that to his children. And for those two years, he sank into his ministry. He taught people to wake up. Listen to me. You are no different than I am. We are the same. We are all one. And he was telling people how to and the disciples when he sent the disciples out to go and heal. How? He taught them the exact same things that he learned. And the, what did the disciples do? They went out and they healed people. How? They learned how to gain their energy. Like we all have the ability to. So, you know, when Jesus was executed, they freaked out and they panicked. And so they withdrew. And, you know, that was the end of that. And then, you know, he was hidden from history, basically put up on a pedestal to be worshipped and I died and he was the only son of God. You died for my sins is the biggest crock of there is. Yeah. It is not true in any way, you know, and I get flack. For and if it, you don't I, worship me, then you're going to burn in hell in eternity. Right. Right. And it's just like, you know, and another thing I want to say is the opening, you know, when the, the Bible and the first hypocrisy in it is like God created the universe. And when he was done in the seventh day, he rested. Bullshit. He, we're still creating the universe right now, period, as we speak. And God still talks to all of us. And he still talks to all of us. The universe is being created through all our love. When we show love, kindness, and empathy, the universe is expanding in love. The universe wasn't created in seven days. It's bullshit. It's okay? always expansion. Expansion it's, will never we're stop. We're growing now because of our love that we're experiencing and our my love for all of you. It is still expanding. The universe is still growing. So that's the first lie ever mm -hmm. right there. And that's why, you know, I was like, uh, I've got to tell people that, you know, you have nothing to be afraid of. And I will continue my journey. I will continue to help everyone that I can on this. Because even now, even this last August, I had another spiritual experience in a year, two years after my NDE. I had my first out of body experience. I went back home. I was very emotional, as you saw, when I, when I, when I feel home, I'm instantly emotional. Um, I was like, why did you leave me in the hospital? You know, you gave me this great experience. And like, I didn't know that I was creating the hospital <laughs> through my own thoughts, because that's, that's where I was. So I was, I was creating it. Do you see the movie After Death, by any chance? It's a movie? Is it like, is yeah. it a documentary? No, it wasn't a documentary. It was like um, The Chosen did it, you know, but it was called After Death. And they had four or five near-death experiencers. One of them was Howard Storm. You've heard of Howard Storm, correct? Yeah, I was thinking about having him on here, actually, because he, um, he, he lives near me. Wow. But anyways, they showed his, his experience when he was talking about it, you know, but it was the way they did it was was just fantastic. But I was like, why did you keep me in the hospital? And I'm like, I wasn't. I was. That's what I thought. That's what I was envisioning. And that's where I was. So I said, why didn't you take me home? Why couldn't I go through the tunnel? Why could you know why the hospital? And I'm pouting like a little two year old. I had the greatest gift in the world. Right. And I'm pouting like a two year old. So I walk from my bedroom. I'm not kidding. I come here. and I lay down on the couch. Right. And I'm like. No sooner I put my head on the pillow and I was, woof, I was yanked out of my body and I was in the void. I mean, it was void of everything. And I was, again, I was me. 
you know, and I'm traveling through this tunnel and I mean, at the speed of light and it was as black as it was just the void. And then all of a sudden, like light gray started to permeate through it, you know, and I was spinning and I'm like, and I'm just traveling at an unprecedented speed. And I'm like, I mean, your, I, you know, your vision is just, it's nothing like this limited that we have now and I'm so, distance wise I couldn't tell you but there was like this little tiny pinhead of just this little dot of white all around and I could again see everything around me just utter blackness no sound no nothing just a void and I'm traveling and now this little is the little white's getting sliver it's like a little sliver of light you know and I'm like all of a sudden I started to feel the unconditional love again and I'm like oh he heard me. I was like, I'm going home. I'm going home. And I'm so excited, you know, and this, this white is getting bigger, you know, and all of a sudden this white just encompassed everything. And I, you don't know the beauty of white until you see, there's no way to describe the, the absolute beauty of this, this, this white light. It would burn people's eyes, regular eyes, but it was just the most beautiful, innocent and pure and magnificent white. You know, and now it is everywhere. It had permeated through the void, through the darkness. And I'm getting so close. Like now we're, we're as close as you. And all of a sudden I get right up to it. And I'm talking a hair away. And I'm like, I get boom. And I'm back in my body. And I'm like, and I was like, yeah, I just smiled. And I just laid there. And I said, he's listening to me. He hears me, you know. And had I crossed into that light, my body here on the couch would have died, you know. Right. But the point of my telling that story is don't for one minute think that the non-physical and your father doesn't hear every word you say, every thought in your in your physical mind. Make no mistakes, ladies and gentlemen. He hears everything you say to him. Everything. You are never alone, ever. No matter what you're going through, he is listening to you. And the reason, well, why is he allowing people to suffer. He's allowing you to live what you signed up for. This is what you signed up for. You're creating in your mind the negativity, the pain, and the suffering. Not once have you ever felt pain. Well, that's, I feel my, my body. No, your body hurts. You're not your body. When you get in your vehicle to go to the store, are you your BMW or your Jeep? No, it's a vehicle. This is our vehicle, okay? It feels pain. We do not. So he hears you. He loves you. Okay. But he's not going to step in because this is what you signed up for. You are the creator of your world. If you're no, if you don't like it, change it. How? Through your positive thoughts. If you only think of negative things, negative things are going to come to you. But if you say, if you change your vibration, you change your energy, you change into love, you forgive that person for berating you because when you look at that person, you're that's you. So when you're telling him off and you're doing all this, you're telling yourself off, right? And you're gonna climb back down the ladder of lower energy. But you forgive and you love unconditionally, you climb back up that ladder, right? And the more positive things come to you. The non-physical world, ladies and gentlemen, it's a genie in a bottle. Everything you ask for will come. But if it's in a negative way, you're not going to get it. But if you're positive and you have those positive affirmations, right, it's going to come to you. It takes time here in the physical world. Okay. Also our beliefs. Like if we yes. have, if we have, we've got to get rid of those limiting beliefs where we're not worthy. We're not of it because or just if we don't believe in general that that it's manifestation is real we have to have the belief we can only manifest things within our personal belief system correct and if you believe the bible then you're stuck in stuck. the water you're not going to go anywhere because it's wrong ladies and gentlemen i'm here to there is no th such thing as sin sin does not exist man created that the church created it why to keep you living in fear so you come there every sunday to be told that you're unworthy and when you die you're going to live in a box and if you're in the dirt and if you're worthy enough what millennia from now that you might wake up and to be condemned to a hellish life here on earth until you know, God, you know, God is not a human being, ladies and gentlemen. God is love, light, and energy. There is no human up there waiting to judge you with a baseball bat. 
It's never going to happen. Okay. Jason, are you saying that God doesn't need our money? God does not need your money. God does not oh. need your physical stuff. Okay. It does not care. Neither do I care about money or physical things. So we can't anymore. pay for our sins to go away. Cause that's what the mm-hmm. Catholic you know? church so when, is. Right. When they're passing that basket along, Hey, throw your money in there. Why? The archdiocese pays for your priest's salary, right? He lives for free in a building that he doesn't have to pay rent on. So what are you giving money to the church for? Wake up, ladies and gentlemen. It's a lie. It's a sham. It's a scam to keep you living in fear. You have nothing to fear. You are woefully unprepared, ladies and gentlemen, for what you are going to see and feel when you transition. Okay, you are woefully unprepared like I was. Um, And I'm here to tell you, it's simply the most beautiful experience you will ever have. There is no such thing as death. Death does not exist. It is simply a transition back home. That is it. And it's beautiful. But I will say this, for all of you living in that negative energy, and I know about Howard Storm, right? He, he said, well, hell does exist. Howard Storm. No, Howard Storm created that. Why? When you leave this physical realm, you cannot take anything with you from here to there. It is not acceptable. It will not go. You will end up in the void and, you know, you will experience a hellish experience. You cannot love money. I love my, I can't die. I love my, I have a great job. I have all this money. I have a great wife. I have beautiful. You're going to end up in the void. Okay. You can't take that with you. All right. And he created his experience. He created hell for himself, but it was only in the moment where, um, uh, God, please help me. Boom. There's the light. Why? He raised his energy. He went home. Our, con- our consciousness you. goes with us. With yes. Whatever we believe, we're our, our, our consciousness, our beliefs are part of that. And when we die, our consciousness is still there. And if we believe that we deserve hell, guess what? You're going to have a exactly what, what you believe. We're, what we're still have. creating our own reality. Correct. Because the void, ladies we're and gentlemen, creators. is nothing but... Yes, we are extremely powerful, creative, divine beings, gods, ladies and gentlemen, okay? When you enter the void, the void is nothing but, it is still heaven, but the void is pure consciousness. There is no physical realm to wait for it to manifest. When you think of something, it is instantly there in front of you, instantly. Like, if I think of a big ice cream cone, it's going to be there. But if I think, because I'm locked in the dark and I can't see or hear anything. And all of a sudden, you know, I don't care who you are. You know, you don't think of puppy dogs and kitten cats when you're in pitch dark and you can't see anything and you conjure up the worst. Right. And it's that happens for a reason. It's kind of like scaring your kids straight when you send them off to boot camp, you know, because they're a troubled team. They come back a perfect child. Why? They got shit scared out of them. So when you when you like Howard Storm scared the crap out of himself. Right. Uh, God, please. Boom. He's home. It's all about your energy, ladies and gentlemen. If and you asking, live, and asking, asking for help, asking, asking God, for, surrendering, yes, like you said earlier. It, yes. You know, when I finally cried out to God, that was the presence in my ICU room. Why? He knew I was coming up on this because I created that NDE in my contract to Finally, listen to my GPS, right? My internal guidance system, you know, that was kind of me being scared straight. It was a beautiful experience, but it got me to where I needed to be in to start changing my life and to find my teaching, you know, am I Jesus? Am I at his level? No. Am I getting there? I've begun to control at times my power in my energy and I've been able to move it in my body and it's taken pain away. Is it, you know, am I Jesus yet? No. But can I control my power? Yes. Jesus it, was like a master of, and I, I, do you know who Dolores Cannon is? I, yes. Yes. She, she said, you know, cause she used to hypnotize people back. So like it, so far, like I think it happened at first by accident, but she's not the only one who's been able to do this but before their death and into even previous lifetimes. And one of the things that she, um, she, she hypnotized them. And what was my point? Shoot, I just forgot. I forgot my point. What were you saying? <laughs> I'm gonna. Um, I've got to remember this. I was like, I was like, you know, I'm a, I, you know, 
I'm a teacher, you know, and I can control oh, or I'm starting to the energy. I remembered you know? manipulating energy. She said that's what all these people she she did it thousands and thousands of times hypnotizing these people back before their incarnation. And they all said the main purpose what well, not purpose only purpose, but to learn while we're here is how to manipulate energy is how to reach who we are, which is nothing more than energy is to to Find that energy and yes, as you say, control it, you know, and once you get that, and that's what Jesus did. That's why he didn't incarnate anymore. He did it, mm -hmm. which we're all doing. But in the same time, while you're here, you want to have these experiences, marriage, college, you know, abuse, you know, you name it, we go through it. And it's all in a purpose. It's all an educational tool. Okay. It's not. A punishment and people are looking at you know what's going on in their lives as a punishment it's not you're there in that particular environment to learn from it and if you don't in your next incarnation you may have climbed up the ladder a couple steps but you're still going to experience that until you accept it and face it mm -hmm. okay so don't think i'm going to be a big rock star and live a beautiful no you're going to go up a couple steps and you're going to income you know you're going to get to choose a male or female but you're still going to face those until you realize that it's not real. Just face it. It's it, You're never going to be hurt by anything, okay? It's a challenge for you. Yes, it may be unpleasant at the time, okay? I agree. I've had many of them. I'll be the first to admit it. But it's a lesson. It's there to teach you, you know? That's all it is. And... Near-death right. experiences were just like my, I, I've been obsessed with them since a teenager. And like that, I, I was, we were talking before that we started recording about that my awakening happened because I was, it was triggered from reading a near-death experience book. Um, I think it was Saved by the Light. I can't remember for sure. But then I started, I've been, I've been reading the stories, I've documentaries. I've been into it for so long, but I really love, so I know all about them inside and out obsessed but i really love the life reviews the life reviews when you realize there's no punishment but when we go through a life review we have to feel the feelings of the other people that we impacted throughout this lifetime and that could be really really good or if you weren't so nice you know and a lot of it's the smaller things things we didn't think mattered the way we talked to our grandmother that day when hurt her feelings we got to feel wow. that with those are the things that really, really matter. The small acts of kindness matter. And then also we got to feel when we were not nice to people and it's not a punishment, but that's kind of could be somebody's personal hell. If you were a, not a nice person and you were abusive to people, guess what? It's that your life review is going to suck. You know, <laughs> I'm not looking forward to mine. I'll be, I'll, you know, I've me, already not, not as a teenager for me. I don't want to see it. Uh, uh, yeah, but, I was like, uh, man, you know, um, I, yeah, okay, I, I own it, I get it, but you know, I didn't have one, you know, and um, but I know when mine comes that, you know, when I say there's no judgment on the other side from the non-physical, you will sit there watching your life review and you will go, mm, I could have done that better. That, yeah, it's how we learn. That's right, you know, and the non-physical is learning from us, you know, yes. so those that souls that don't want to come, we're not forced to come here, you know, we're kind of like the special forces, we're the, we're the ones with the most experience that are here now, helping Earth translate and others trans, you know, transition into the 5D, you know, and I learned this, this was knowledge that came, this is beautiful, I was like, I was answering, asking questions and like, and I was in a spiritual group, and um, he was a communicator or he was a medium with Jesus. And he says, and this is like the last 15 or 20 minutes of the, of the, the session. And he's like, he said, listen, people, I said, I need you to understand this. He says, the fact that you are in this group right now is testament to how powerful and knowledgeable you are. And, he's, and I said, there are trillions of souls trying to come here right now. And God is saying, no. He said, the fact that you are here, that means you stood before God with two other souls. So there were three of you for your timeline to come here at that specific time. He said, there were three of you. Jesus was saying this. And he said, the fact that you're sitting here right now, God said, only you can go. 
because you have the most experience to complete your mission. And everybody else is going to have to wait until we transition into 5D. And then when that happens, then others, other souls can come. But right now, the fact that all of us and all of you listening to this right now is testament to how powerful and how much experience you have in this 3D world to help this world and help the, this species of humanoid transition into a higher realm of consciousness. That to me is, I, I was like, wow do you know how powerful that is even when i think about that now is you're standing before your father with two other eager souls and he says you two can't you can go you know and then you go to sleep and here you come that i was just like and it made sense it was like like more you know that download coming of yes that is it and i was like do you know how powerful that is Listen, ladies and gentlemen, you, I can't begin to tell you how powerful you are, you know, and that was just, I, I couldn't sleep that night. I paced, it was a weekend, it was like a Friday night, and I'm pacing back and forth all night. I was like, how beautiful that is, you know? Do you um, think, I know we're already over an hour, but I want to ask you this question before. Um, do you think that it's some people's journey just to not wake up in this incarnation and just to play that role of you know, whatever they signed up to do, maybe, maybe they signed up because I think we've all been like the victims and the abusers and in and, and different lifetimes. Absolutely. We played it all out. Yep. Do you think maybe some people they're not waking up because they signed up to stay asleep in this lifetime? No, you'll, everybody will wake up. Everybody oh, okay. will wake up. So, um, but yes, what you said is, you know, we've been, we played the victim. The abuse. We're all role playing for one another. And ladies and gentlemen, you know, when you're married or have a girlfriend, you know, you want her to put on her outfit, right? She's role playing for you. Why? Because she loves you, right? You love her. We love each other so much. You come up to me and say, would you please rape me? The other, all your other soulmates were, no, no, no. And, you know, fine, mm -hmm. fine. And the, the event happens and then you get stuck in the pain of like, why me? Why did this happen? Well, you know, it happened because you asked them. We're all role playing here, ladies and gentlemen. There's nothing wrong with anything that is taking place. But that's how we learn. If all we know is love, how can we know what anything else is? So we come here to experience that. It's all relative. So it is, you know, and I want to say one more thing, because I've mentioned before that I've died 3,200 over 3,200 times, right? Yes. So it was the night I was watching a Monday night football game or a Sunday night football game. And it was the, the, the night DeMar Hamlin had his heart attack on the field. If you remember that. I do. He got hit and he was, <laughs> so I'm sitting here on the couch. I'm in Cincinnati. So. Yeah. Okay. So he was, he had his heart attack and I remember watching him fall down, but then I put my head back and all of a sudden I felt this, mm, this buzz. And I was like, Oh, and all of a sudden, woof, I'm on a beach, walking, beautiful sun in front. I could hear the waves. I could see him, beautiful golden brown sand. And I'm like, and I feel this presence next to me. And I said, who are you? And he says, I'm Jeffrey. And I said, I'm your guide. Uh, you know, and I was like, Jeffrey. I said, oh, man. That's a Toys R Us elephant, I, you know, or giraffe. And I'm like, that is the first thing Jeffrey. that popped in my head, too. I can't believe you said right. that. <laughs> I said, Jeffrey. But it was like, Jeffrey, you know, and I'm not, of course, I'm not speaking. This is, these are all thoughts, you know. And I'm like, Jeffrey. I said, Oh, how about John? And now I call him Jeffrey. But, anyways, I said, How many times have I died? You know, and he says, oh, The number instantly came in him, it was over 3,200 times. And he said, You're ancient. And woof, I was back in my body. And I, I sat up. And now DeMar Hamlin's off the field. The game's playing. I'm like, how the hell, how long was I gone? You know? And I was like, what the hell does ancient mean? And I'm like, I was like, I had to find that out. What, what, what does ancient mean? You're an old soul. Yeah. And, you know, I, I was back in one of those groups. And he, they called on me to tell. I said, oh, he said, come on, Jason. You have a beautiful story for people. And, um. I was talking and somebody raised their hand. He's been in, I think, David Succi. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He's been doing near-death interviews for like 15 or 20 years. And he raised his hand. He says, he said, that's amazing. He said, what that means is, he says, 
you have been walking this earth for 20 or 30,000 years, helping humanity through, you know, through that time. And he's like, that's amazing. He said, he said, that's what that means by you being called ancient. He says, you've been walking this earth for 20, 30,000 years. And I was like, wow, wow. I mean, I don't mean to feel special, but I mean, I don't, I was like blown away by, and it felt, I felt the energy in that mm-hmm. moment that he was giving me that. And so, so I know it wasn't wrong, but I mean, wow. The only time you know? we don't mind being called old. <laughs> right. You know, and I was like, so, you know, I was like, wow. I mean, all the loose ends were being tied. All the questions I've been answering and said, please, more knowledge, more, you know, they've all been coming in. This knowledge has all been coming in and, you know, and that's why, you know, when I went to college, somebody said, Jason, you need to be a teacher when you speak or when you give a speech in, in, in front of the class. He says, you're so eloquent and people are just, they're drawn to, I don't want to, no, I'm not teaching. What would I qualify to teach? Seventh through 12th grade. I'm like, no way. You know, and now all of a sudden with my NDE, what am I? A teacher. I'm a teacher. You know, I am teaching people how to access, people are coming, how do I manifest? How do I get my, you know, so I'm, te- and I'm like, wow, wow. So do you do one-on-one? That's what I was going to get to next is how do people find you and what would they reach out to? Like, what are, your, can people hi- hire you? Yes. So I, I've created my own website, but I'm not done with it yet. Um, I don't have a calendar up there, but it's loveandlightjason.com. So you can go there. You can see all my videos are there and there's a way to contact me. And yes, I do one-on-one sessions. It's, you know, and you can book me there. And I've had many bookings so far and I've had so many happy and wonderful people. Um, So that's a place to find me. And of course you found me on YouTube as well. So I'm on Mm -hmm. YouTube, Um, but that's the place where you can reach out to me if you want a one-on-one session. And I don't care what you're going through, you know, um, I will be there for you. I love you all so very much. And the reason I'm doing this and speaking and is because I love you. I don't want you to be afraid. You have nothing to be afraid of. You have nothing to be ashamed of or guilty of, you know, you are loved and you are loved more than you could ever know. So I'm there, find me there. I love it. And you guys, I'm going to put all of his information in the show notes, whatever, wherever you're watching this, look below in the comments or above. It's different for different platforms. But um, Jason, it's been so wonderful talking to you. I love your message. It's beautiful. It's going to give people a lot of hope and hopefully take away, you know, all this guilt and shame that's just not real. It's not real. No. And, you know, we create our own sickness, our cancers and our diseases It's through judgment, ladies and gentlemen, do not judge, do not Mm -hmm. Okay, Um, we are not to judge, we are to love and forgive. So all your sickness, your cancers, your unhealthiness, it's through judgment. Autoimmune, spiritual reason, self-rejection. Your body attacks itself. Yes, it does. And it will until you give itself, you know, when I, when I say love your body, when you get up in the morning, you're out of the shower and you're looking at yourself, love yourself, love your body. Say, you know what? Touch yourself, hug yourself. Say, you know what? I love you. I'm sorry that I felt wrongly about you, but I love you. You know, your body will begin to heal. Yes, it will. It'll get rid of the cancers It'll get rid of everything. And Learn to love yourself. Learn to access your love. And when you do, you will begin to heal your body. And when you move your body with exercise, do it for out of celebration that you're able to move your body and exercise, not as a punishment for something you ate or drank. Right. You know, so just, yeah, it's all about love, ladies and gentlemen. And it's all about forgiveness. No matter what happened, forgive unconditionally as I love you all unconditionally, you know, I know I'll get some blowback on this. Well, you know, don't get caught up on that book. Don't I'm telling you now it will keep you living in fear. And I don't want that. I want you to love and be loved and go out and live your life. Have fun, have fun. Well, I hope at least we planted some seeds, even for, for those people who are going to inevitably, we're going to have people triggered by this conversation. This is just how it's going to go down, you know, and I've been, look into this stuff for, you know, three decades and more. So I, 
you know, I'm not triggered by anything, everything you said, I'm down, you know, but I understand if it's for someone's first time hearing some of these concepts, yeah, they're going to be like w- weirded out or right. Mad, angry, like, angry. We're not all gods. I'm sorry, but Jesus was our Lord and Savior. Yeah. Oh, you want to be lost? You go be lost. That's okay. I still love you, but you know, I won't judge you. That's fine. That is your that's 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 your life if that's where you want to be but i'm telling you your change is going to come you know your maybe, awakening is going to come and you're going to freak out about it because maybe it, you planted a seed for them at least you, you know, know they, they don't have to believe overnight no you know it's you know what's that reference the mustard seed right mm-hmm. there you go okay. you know all you have to do and when they listen, they're going to have that in the back of their thought and, you know, in the back of their head, they're going to go and it's going to fester and it's going to muster and it's going to move. And then all of a sudden that light bulb is going to go, boop. I'm like, oh my God, he's right. You know, and that's all that matters to me. It's like, yeah, you know, that's what matters. You know, I want you all out of the darkness. The light pervades through everything. It crushes the darkness. Raise your energy, ladies and gentlemen, through love, love unconditionally. And you're the perfect guest because that is what this podcast is all about. Spiritual transformation, waking people up, cha- you know, transmuting the darkness to light. And, and, right. and that's what you did for us here today. And I thank you so much for being on the show. And you guys, if this, if this episode helped you, please like it. Please share it with your friends. Share it with people who, who, even if they might not believe exactly the same way as you do, comment below. Jason and I will both be sure to answer any questions that you have in the comments below, we will be here for it. I'll message you, Jason. Hey, absolutely. you need to answer this question. <laughs> no, do that because, you know, I have a tendency, you know, because my YouTube gets blown up and I'm getting stuff from Love and Light, Jason. People want to one-on-ones. So I don't have the time all the And time, you won't get my notifications. Me. Yeah, you won't okay, get mine. So I'll, I'll yeah, have yeah. to tell you. Yeah, I'll have to yes, tell you. Absolutely, you know, and please reach out to me, all of you who want you know, to talk more. And I would be more than happy because there's more things that I haven't been in. I could, we could sit here and have a four hour conversation. I know I'll have to have you back. I'm sure because I do know more things from watching your story that we didn't get to, but we'll have to, we'll have to have you come back. If you, if you like, I would love to. Thank you for having me. I'm deeply honored. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Jason. And we'll say goodbye to our audience now. Thank you guys. Please make sure you like and subscribe to this podcast because we are trying to grow it and so we could have continue to have amazing guests like Jason on the show. So thank you everyone. Have a great night. Bye.